Hey everybody, it's PJ from Wisconsin Air Gunners, and either this is another awesome AEA air gun from the pellet shop, or I just got my 1983 order of the world's best boom box. Let's check it out. All right, it's not a boom box, though that would be really cool. It's an air gun. It's an AEA Challenger Pro in 25 cal. And we're gonna take it to the bench, we're gonna set it up, get a scope on it, put a moderator on it, get some air in it, and then we're gonna shoot it. We're gonna shoot today at 65 yards. This is supposed to be a really good gun for long distance, so I figure that's a pretty good place to start. All right, let's get it open. My wife stole the last hat they gave me. So I got a new one. As with everything from the pellet shop, it comes nicely packed and double boxed. of AEA. Nothing too fancy, but well padded and protected. So here it is. This is the AEA Challenger Pro. Nice and solid feeling, as is pretty common with the AEAs. You're going to have to attach the buttstock. Now, I was cautioned about two things with the buttstock. Um, and if I actually turn this the right way, maybe I'll get it to thread in. No, well, I had it right the first time. But, um, this is one of the original or first runs coming in, and there were some delays. This actually comes with an adjustable cheek piece, um, in addition to forward and back. Um, you'll be able to move it up and down. Um, so in order to not delay the guns coming to the US, um, they've shipped some of these out without that. And then once those come in, you'll be able to get those. Um, but I've also been cautioned that uh, this has been nicknamed the beard catcher. Uh, honestly, uh, I don't have too much in the way of bulk in my beard. Um, so I'm going to be careful about that. Well, that shoulder's really nice. It's got a good weight to it. Um, so let's uh, take a quick look at the other stuff in the box and then really get to the main attraction here. Looks like it's shipping with two magazines. You've got a fill probe. And again, the AEA fill probes. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of fill probes. However, if you've got to have a fill probe, um, this, this as far as fill probes go, ticks the fill probe boxes, if you know what I mean. Um, one, it comes with extra O-rings, and the risk with a fill probe, and one of the reasons I like the Foster, is um, you, don't you don't risk nicking O-rings. But this one um, has two on there, and they send you a bunch of spares in the package. And, on the other hand, uh, it's not threaded, it's machined out 
So you can just attach that to your uh, quick fill adapter. So you don't have to then buy a separate thing, thread it on. Um, and now that I have a couple of these AEA guns, I have a couple of probes. So that's all, all set. Um, in the package here, this is um, a different spring. This gun comes apparently pretty hot and we may make some adjustments either before or after we shoot the first couple of rounds. So they give you that second spring so that you can alter that a little bit. Um, other than that, that looks like about it. So let me get this box out of the way and these magazines out and we'll look at the gun. Uh, we'll look at it together. All right, let's take a look at the features as I'm seeing them here. You've got side lever cocking. It is stiff, but no catches along it. Very positive lock up there. It has a pin probe, interesting. So you're getting maximum airflow. It has the, I guess pretty much standard for the AEA rifle uh, folding stock. So if that's a, a feature, you got that. You certainly can pull this off and replace it with any other buttstock that you want. And like I said, uh, my understanding is there is on mine a missing up and down that'll be given to me at some point. It looks like on this buttstock, there are cutouts for uh, quick disconnect sling mounts. Um, very easy maneuverability forward and back. Looks like five or six adjustment points depending on how you count them. Um, this is metal of some sort um, and it has a uh, textured but not rubber butt pad, which is also adjustable up and down, which is pretty nice. You've got safe and fire right here. Very easy, very positive. A little bit of a click there, nothing too loud. You've got two gauges, one for the regulator and one for your pressure. So uh, I think it's pressure here and regulator here. The trigger looks uh, pretty standard blade trigger. Um, I'll have to look at the manual to see adjustments, but we will do uh, we do, will do a trigger gauge test on that. Picatinny rail up top, so you got plenty of space for uh, mounting optics, and then out front. We do have a removable cap on the barrel. Now, this is not really what I would consider a shrouded barrel. It does have a shroud over it, um, but it doesn't appear that there's any way that any of the air in the barrel uh, or the air coming out of the barrel is using the volume of the shroud in order to do anything. However, the way this is engineered, you have a little slip that goes in between the barrel and the shroud, and you have a little cutout which means that with the barrel locked back here, this shroud um, actually is probably actioning, uh, actioning, probably acting as a tensioner. So the way I'm seeing this right now, um, this actually has a tensioned barrel system, um, which may be why people say it's pretty accurate or it may contribute to some of that accuracy because you can you can essentially the way this is set up the the shroud the outer coating if you will 
is can't go any further here and when you screw this in and put tension on it it's pulling the barrel forward i wouldn't go crazy with it but it's pulling the barrel forward and should add to some rigidity um, you could also do that putting a moderator on here unfortunately uh, for whatever reason they went with m14 threads which is not standard with any of our air gun moderator company thread packages so donnie fl has created an aea challenger pro adapter and this it actually has the cutout so it goes inside that shroud and it also has a little hole so you could slide an allen key through there and apply some tension to it um, and in that way get that sort of tension barrel look um, so we'll wind up putting a moderator on there i've got a couple different ones to try later on uh, see what kind of information or uh, what kind of data i can collect on that but that's a direct fit on there fits really smoothly um, and i think the I think the way they did the color on this just looks fantastic. Um, I do I do love the color on here. Um, you do have a Picatinny section down here. It's a pretty short one. Um, and I'd like it to be out here. So your choices are either gonna be to get some kind of extension rail, um, or uh, if you follow Orion the Iguana Hunter, um, he just did a like do-it-yourself project where you make a, a rail extender. Um, he did it, I think, using, it was either a piece of uh, aluminum pipe or a piece of conduit. Um, but you could, basically you put a scope mount there, put a piece of pipe, and then you put um, like a, uh, the, they sell the clamps to clamp onto a scope so you have a pick rail to put on a flashlight is, is usually how I've seen them marketed put that there and then you can clamp your bipod there. I'm using a tripod and I'm using, uh, Sabre Tactical makes a short Arca Swiss um, converter. So this converts Picatinny to Arca Swiss and then I've just got it in this uh, shorty photo tripod. Works really slick and that's probably how I'm gonna shoot when I'm on the bench. So I think it's time to get a scope on. To start mounting the scope, obviously, you need to make a selection. Uh, gonna be using the Element Optics Helix 6x24. This is a second focal plane scope. I think it's gonna be a nice uh, pairing on there. Gonna be using some FX No Limit Rings. So we'll get those out of the package. The No Limit Rings come with all the Allen keys you'll need if you don't have your own. My guess is you probably do. I'm also going to be using this Wheeler uh, level set. The way this works is you need to get the gun oriented and you need to find a flat spot on the gun so that you can get this level. And you want to make little tiny adjustments until you get that right smack dab in the center and then you take this part and you open it up so that you can get it on the barrel and basically you're, you're almost gonna like transfer level to level so this goes out here and you start closing the jaws up here You're sort of going to clamp this on the barrel. So it's level. And now, once we get the scope mounted on there, we put that on top. Oh, sorry. And then we'll see whether it's level that way. Especially important as you're shooting longer and longer distances. The nice part about that
front clamping on there is we're going to be able to move the gun around to make sure we get it and the rings and everything in a good position because an important part of scope mounting is making sure that you have your eye relief set up properly. And I'm not tightening these down because I'm really just sort of guessing at where the scope's going to sit. So these are no limit rings and what you'll see is that they can, you know, the top part moves independent of the bottom part and that's so that for shooting long distance we can actually move these so that the scope can't sort of like a 20 MOA rail but that scope will can't slightly down which will give us more ability to reach out to longer targets. So that looks okay there, but I still need to see if that's going to be right for me relative to eye relief. So if I put that right there, I'm seeing a nice clean picture. But if I extend the buttstock out, I need to adjust this to where it's going to be set up for me when I have the right length of pull. See that is crazy length of pull. I wouldn't shoot it that far out. So that's not quite right. Let's try it like that. All right, that's good length of pull for me. And I've got nice eye relief. So that should be good. Now I've moved it so I've thrown off my level, but I know it's set there. So all I have to do is make that little adjustment. One of the most important things about mounting a scope is that you don't over torque these scopes. And if you've over torqued them, um, you'll know about it because it will cause you problems, particularly with the parallax adjustment. If you ever mount a scope and what you find is you move the parallax adjustment, but it doesn't feed feel consistently smooth, like it's too easy to move and nothing happens in the scope, and then it kind of gets hard and it catches up, my guess is you have over tightened these rings and you need to back off on that. So what I'm going to do is just get these screws started. On both sides get them to where they're kind of almost bottoming out and then we'll adjust to make sure it is square up and down and side to side again that's what we're going to use the levels for And then we'll do that final tightening. All right. So I check there and make sure I haven't bobbled that at all. And then there's this little flat spot up top on the cap. Oh, 
that looks good for a start. So I'm gonna get these tightened down and I do a, a cross pattern on these. A little bit on each side. And I never use the long end of the wrench. Doesn't need that much torque. That's gonna lead to actually over torquing. But if you do just the short end, you're gonna be just fine. If you go slow, you're way less likely to throw off level. And then um, from where I am, you guys can't obviously see this, but I've got a couple things that are straight up and down. So I can take this, line it up, and it looks straight up and down that way. So should be good. Now we're ready to put some air in it and get over to the bench. Well, first thing we gotta do is load up some pellets. So we've got some of the FX Heavy 25 cals. They are the, what are they, 33-ish grains. Got uh, your magazine right here. And we have to rotate against the spring tension. And then you're gonna drop one in, skirt first. Get that first one started. And then you're just going to fill the rest of the magazine, dropping them in head first. Pretty simple process. Again, this is the 25 cal. Well, we're going to make an attempt to get some initial chrono numbers and uh, see where she's shooting. Got the FX 34 grain pellets loaded up and uh, you should be able to hear what the uh, chronograph reading is. I have adjusted the transfer port just a little bit um, because I've heard that even with the heavier 25 cal pellets uh, she's cooking them out there so We'll see what we find out here. I did also put a, uh, as as recommended, a little bit of a beard saver on the cheek piece. We'll see if that works out. Wow, uh, so 1037. We are gonna probably bring that down just a little bit. Uh, may adjust that transfer port just a little bit more. Yeah, we're going to tone that down just a little bit. There's a fresh 10 rounds in the magazine. And let's see what this shot string looks like.
So one thing to note, um, you can run the magazine dry, <laughs> and it doesn't have uh, it doesn't have a stopper for you. So you do have to count your rounds. All right. Um, if we look at the shot string, ten rounds, a high of 895, a low of 868, an average of 860. A spread of 27 and a standard deviation of 8.6. Um, my guess is as I keep shooting that'll probably get a little bit better. Um, I'm also adjusting the velocity based on using the transfer port and not doing anything like a regulator adjustment or a hammer spring adjustment. And honestly those are better ways to tune a rifle. Um, but this isn't that kind of video. This is just kind of giving you an idea of what you're going to get right out of the box. So, by simply loosening this right here, and then turning a dial that has some little bit of graduation on the other side, um, you can bring the velocity down from what I know would have been totally supersonic, um, when I started, you can bring that down into a very reasonable uh, high 800s um, and have decent consistency. Now, let's take a look at what accuracy looks like. So let me um, shut the camera down for a few minutes, get the scope dialed in so I've got some kind of zero, and then we'll put a target out at, I think we're going to put it out at 65 yards and see what we can do. four pounds, six ounces. Four pounds, 10 ounces. All right, there is a target out there at 65 yards. We've got wind blowing from this side over to this side. Uh, my watch says it's seven miles an hour. It's probably a little bit more than that based on what the wind flags are doing, but we'll see. Got 10 rounds ready. Just aired it up. Let's see what she does.
wind's blowing that pellet pretty good. Yeah, the wind has just died. That was 10 shots. Yep. It does decock, by the way. All right, let's go take a look. So here's our group at 65 yards. A little bit bigger than I'd like. But I can't say that the wind was really cooperating today. Looks like a little bit bigger than a two inch group. but you could definitely watch the wind just taking those pellets. So I wasn't super satisfied with what we saw at 65 yards. And uh, I just think this gun's capable of a little bit more. So I had a target up for some RMAC practice that I've been doing out at 90 yards. And I thought, uh, let's just see what it can do. So I'm gonna show you a couple of groups here. Okay, you need to ignore these two. That's from the 30 cal, and that was trying to figure out elevation. Once I got elevation figured out, there's six rounds there. And then um, down on this target, again, ignore this one, that's 30 cal. Um, but there are actually three pellets in that spot right there. That was another, oops, oh, sorry. So ignore this, but that's a five shot group right there. Um, I will uh, I'll do analysis on that. This was another 10 shot group. So how do you like that? A uh, little change in the wind and I'm getting better groups at 90 yards than I was at 65, which just tells you that so much of the long range game is being able to read the wind. And what I'm doing when I'm shooting groups on the bench is not trying to read the wind. Um, I'm specifically picking a point of aim and trying to show you what a group looks like, which unfortunately in winter time in the conditions I've got, uh, I, I, if, if anybody's got a hundred yard indoor range <laughs> let me know 
and we'll do box to bench at your facility. But I don't have that, so we got to shoot in the conditions we've got. Um, let's uh, let's fire away at some animals and see what you think about that. All right, let's give the animals a try at 55 yards. for five, not too bad. You got that guy figured out. Just reading the wind. If you can read the wind right, you can hit it every time. Wind's picking up a little bit. And drop it. Just nicked it on that one. Well, everybody, thanks for hanging out with me on another box to bench review. Uh, I like the uh, AEA Challenger Pro. It feels good in the shoulder. It's got a lot of really good features um, and pretty good accuracy. The chicken <laughs> that I was hitting there at the end. Should just see this guy. This said 55 yards. And once you figure out the wind hold, hitting a little target like that is no problem at all. The accuracy at 65 in this test wasn't phenomenal. I would have liked to have seen something more. But I'll throw a few things out here. This is literally a box to bench test. I get a gun in a box, I open it up from the UPS guy, I don't do anything other than put a scope and a moderator on it, and I shoot it. Well, I do put air in it, and of course I add some pellets. But that's how box to bench works. I don't spend weeks at a time going through and fine tuning the gun. Now I will do that as I have this gun longer, um, and I think where it can benefit the most is a decrease in regulator pressure and then I'll have to see what I can do to balance out the hammer spring with that. And Remember when I said that the Challenger Pro came with a different hammer spring in the box? Well, I did and I switched it out and I want to show you what a difference it makes in case you want to do the same. I'm no expert on these things it seems like it's the same thickness or amount of springiness, but it is just ever so slightly shorter. The hammer spring itself is located underneath the cap that doubles as the hinge mechanism for the folding stock. And you're going to be tempted to take out these three screws to get at it. Don't do that. It's not the way in. The first thing you need to do is look underneath the gun and remove this panel. There's one bolt holding it in. 
Once you get the hatch out of the way, you'll be confronted by these three screws which you need to remove. And at that point, you'll be able to pull that end cap out, exposing the hammer spring. And here you can see what that's going to look like. The rod that comes up the middle has to line up with that hole when you put it all back together. You can see here that the old spring, or the original spring, protrudes slightly. So there is a little bit of spring tension there, but not enough to fling parts across the room. Here's the new spring installed. I did take a little bit of silicone oil and lightly coated that spring just to avoid any possibility of premature wear or rust. I'd say the only part that's even remotely tricky is getting that pin to stay perfectly centered so you can line it up with the hole in the cap and then pressing the whole cap mechanism in against the spring tension so you can line up these three Allen bolts going back through to put the whole thing back together. Here's the reward, and I would say this is the exciting part. Doing this modification, which took all of five minutes, dropped the trigger weight by a full pound, and maybe even a little bit more than that. It also resulted in a significantly better standard deviation on my shot string and increased accuracy at 65 yards. Remember before I was shooting between a two and a three inch group, granted in some wind, but now my group is significantly better. Check out this. This thing has a load of power. I don't shoot a lot of slugs in 25 cal, but I think if you were interested in slug shooting, at least from getting it up to velocity standpoint, you'd have no problems achieving some pretty good velocities with some pretty heavy slugs in this gun. Again, something I haven't tested and don't anticipate testing. The cocking lever is a little bit stiff, but it's very smooth. The trigger is a little bit stiff, a little over four pounds, but in line with, let's say, an AR trigger, and a lot of people are really familiar with that, it does have an AR trigger feel, both in the shape of the blade and how it breaks. You might really like that. It does need some moderation. It's a loud gun. Um, I used the Sumo for my first test. I'll probably also try out a Ronin. May scale it back to a Sumo. Um, but we'll try and figure out what works the best, not only from a sound suppression standpoint, but from an accuracy standpoint, because it's my firm belief that the size of the moderator does have an impact on accuracy downrange. I do like the way they have the barrel set up. Uh, that tensioned kind of thing really does a good job. And um, like I said, a little bit windy today, kind of a shifty wind. And as a result, those 65 yard shots were a little bit tough. But I'm gonna put up a group I shot at 30 yards. And I want you to see the kind of, well, the reason I think there's so much potential for this gun. This is a really nice group. And this was actually 14 shots uh, because I had shot a, a half mag and then another mag. Finally, if you're thinking about picking up this rifle, um, I would make sure you have a heavy duty air source uh, because it does, you, you are filling it up pretty frequently and it does take a 4,500 PSI fill. So if you're using a, you know, even a 300 bar bottle, um, you're gonna, you're gonna find that you're not filling it quite all the way up every single time. I easily got two magazines and I think there was probably a third magazine in there before I hit the regulator. I'm really uh, interested in the possibility of taking that regulator down a little bit uh, because, well, it'll give you more shots for fill because it's not using as much air every shot, 
but you'll also have a little bit more room to come down before you hit that regulator. I think that might be nice. If you're interested in picking one of these up, uh, mine came from the pellet shop. Ben and Leticia always take great care of me, uh, and I'm happy to uh, recommend them as a retailer. I know that these are also being carried by Utah Air Guns, and they've also always done a great job uh, getting stuff out to me just as fast as they can, um, and they're great guys to work with. So no hesitation recommending either the Pellet Shop or Utah Air Guns. So if you're interested in the AEA Challenger Pro, why don't you take a look at either of their websites or give them a call and see what they have to say. Until the next video, everybody, shoot safe and shoot straight, and we'll see you around.